Hey guys, welcome back to the Wall Street Bull. Anthony here. I hope you're all doing well and staying positive out there. Guys, it is never a dull moment in crypto, that is for sure. That is why I love doing daily market updates. Today is wild. I've got one of the most insane uh, videos on Ripple and XRP that I think I've ever seen. And I'm not making this up, all right? I've also got some interesting confidential documents that I found as well, just doing my research this morning on Ripple and Bitcoin from the Reserve Bank of Australia. It just gets deeper and deeper. We have updates in relation to Sam Bankman-Fried. Uh, the first interview uh, with a fellow uh, YouTuber and influencer has posted that up, and I'm going to show you that as well. There's so much happening. BlockFi sent me another email today about the Chapter 11 bankruptcy. Crazy stuff in relation to BlockFi as well. I'm going to go through everything. Make sure you stick around to the end of the video. Let's get straight into it, guys. And uh, it's going to be very bullish, all right? So let's go. Massive shout out and thank you to every single one of you who have subscribed to the channel. I really appreciate it. Thank you very much. If you are new to the channel, make sure you smash the subscribe button down there and turn on that little bell notification as well. Because as you can see right here, I love documenting my journey with investing with cryptos, dividend stocks, growth stocks, talking about passive income, building financial freedom. And yes, my goal at the end of the day is to build generational wealth. So come along this incredible journey. We are just getting started. Also, if you you can give this video a thumbs up watch it straight through it would really help me push this channel out to a lot more people because the youtube algorithm is absolute magic when you find ladies and gentlemen do that all right so make sure you give it a good old thumbs up it's down there it doesn't cost you anything thank you very much you guys absolutely rock love every single one of you and uh, also little disclaimer i am not a financial advisor please do your own research and due diligence with this stuff i do not want to see anyone get financially hurt that is why my number one golden rule is i only invest what i can afford to lose and yes we do not like to lose but you can lose money like that in the blink of an eye in crypto as we've all seen over the past few weeks all right so please be careful out there do your own research and due diligence this video is for educational and entertainment purposes only and also as i've been saying for the last few, you know week or so please invest in a cold storage crypto wallet it could be a trezor it could be a ledger it could be an alipol it could be a descent and again if you cannot afford any of those guys it's not a problem i know times are tough at the moment you can use trust wallet it is secure and you have your own seed phrase uh, that is uh, obviously the alternative if you can't afford anything i get it i've been there believe me anyway that is it for the formalities ladies and gentlemen let's get straight into all of the stuff happening today it's chaos this is literally an email that i got six minutes ago from BlockFi. basically earlier today BlockFi first day of chapter 11 hearing was held the important dialogue with the court today will set the foundation for our chapter 11 cases as we strive to maximize value for our stakeholders we look forward to engaging with the official committee now i just want to point out as well ladies and gentlemen that the block fire was sued by the sec not long ago all right they did reach a settlement hundreds of millions of dollars had to be paid to the sec now it's incredible to think that the sec is still going to receive those payouts from block fire all right they'd be registered on in this case for this chapter 11 bankruptcy right here and, and if 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 they are going to use retail investors funds not over my body they're not going to do that so i'm actually taking it upon myself to write a letter to the white house to the president of the united states in relation to gary gensler and his enforcement by action and i will do that today i'm not going to post it up but i am honestly saying i'm going to do that because obviously guys this has gone bankrupt they're using retail investors money to pay the sec and that is not acceptable in my opinion and it needs to be brought to the highest person in the united states because this is getting out of control and i will be doing that i'm not joking and i've already made arrangements to write the letter and i found the address and so forth but anyway that is something i'm going to do as well and uh, i think it needs to be done anyway and another update in relation to XRP, Coinbase wallets will no longer support XRP as of December 5th, 2022. Uh, is this a sign for, obviously it's not for retail, I don't know what, it, and, and I don't want, know what it is, sorry, but this is crazy. Not that I've ever used Coinbase wallet. Um, again, I've bought a couple of coins on Coinbase before, I believe it was XYO and maybe XDC at the time, but uh, that's pretty much it. I don't use Coinbase for anything else, but guys something's going on here i don't know why and i don't know why they would write an amicus brief as well in support of ripple and now they're taking it off their uh, coinbase wallet very interesting don't you 
These were the altcoins up in my portfolio today. We had Telcoin, Ravain, Phantom, Electronium, and Doge. These ones were up in my portfolio. Now, I've seen a pretty crazy price prediction and video on XRP. A lot of people are going to freak out. They're going to say, you're absolutely mad. I'm going to play it for you on Twitter, but let's go to CoinSpot quickly, have a look at the prices just briefly. This is where I personally buy my cryptos in Australia. There is a referral link below. Please feel free to use that if you wish. Of course, do your own research. All the prices you see here are in Australian dollars. Everything else is set to USD because I'm catering for everybody around the world. And again, Bitcoin is sitting at $25,000. It is up 1.03% today. And again, it's been holding around that $24,000 to $30,000 level for months. Months and months and months. And I don't know if uh, anything major happens again with another exchange, which another one went down last night as well. And if USDT goes down, it's going to completely crash the entire market. I don't know what's coming, guys. This is why I've taken the majority of my assets off CoinSpot and put them into cold storage. I'm only keeping the ones that I'm staking on the platform, and I'm fully prepared to lose those. All right. And again, I'll go through my coins in a second, but Ethereum is sitting at 1,800 today. I am staking that on CoinSpot. XRP is in cold storage, guys. And I can't believe the video I saw today. Mind blown. Anyway, I'm going to get into that in a second. Dogecoin at 15 cents. Cardano, I am staking on CoinSpot, 47 cents. Moving down to some other favorites of mine, you've got XLM at 13 cents as well. Algorand's at 37 cents. You've got Quant at 175, remaining quite steady at this level, which again is nice. Hedera's at 7 cents as well. Moving down to some other favorites of mine, of course, Axe Infinity. I am staking that on CoinSpot, $10 at the moment. IOTA's a banking coin, 32 cents. Keep moving down to some other favorites. Casper at $0.04 cents as well. It is part of the banking system. And of course, XDC right there at $0.03. Cents. That is an undervalued gem. Now, let's go to Crypto Bubbles. And guys, I've got the Wall Street Bull Patreon linked below. I put up all my buys, my sells, my trades, my insane trading thing that I'm doing at the moment. It is absolutely wild. Uh, and again, all my dividend investments as well. So please feel free to join up. And again, you will not regret it. It's for serious and bullish investors only. I love this stuff and I'm addicted to it. And I love talking with everyone here directly as well. So feel free to join. Let's go to Crypto Bubbles on the day. Then we'll get into all the juicy news. But Huobi token is up again, 14.5%. 42% on the week. You cannot complain about a 42% return. Doge is still up 7.9% as well. 30% on the week. I have not bought any more Dogecoin. I've been holding mine for a very long time. And again, I got into this obviously before all of the Elon Musk stuff and uh, the SNL and all that kind of stuff when it was like 60 cents USD. And again, I sold out a massive position and I put it into Bitcoin. That's just something I wanted to do. Took some profits out on Doge because I don't know where it's going to go, but I'm still holding a decent position. All right. Uh, we have Phantom up 8.6% as well, which is nice. 22 cents. That's fantastic. Uh, what else we got here? Ethereum's up 4.4% as well. It's been pretty flat, to be quite honest with you, after the proof, uh, sorry, the proof of stake merge. Some updates happening with that as well. What else we got here, ladies and gentlemen? Uh, Quant up 2% on the day. I just want to point out, guys, $195. Again, this was roughly around about $400 uh, during the peak of the bull market as well. And that was Australian dollars. Now trading at 114 US dollars, which again, I love quant. I think it's going to be doing quite well. Hex is up 8.1% as well. I honestly don't know about Hex enough about it, to be quite honest. But uh, again, I just be very careful with this. I'm very reluctant to invest into anything with a, uh, a CEO and a founder that just flaunts all of his stuff online very different to brad garlinghouse i'm just saying that's my opinion everyone can comment on that i don't know but anyway that's pretty much it guys and again i still believe there is uh you know there are incredible buying opportunities even though the prices you see here are up slightly today again i was buying these assets at like 80 to 90 percent more now the xrp ledger now this is the actual live xrp ledger right here now i saw a video today which blew my mind because someone apparently in this video has seen the private XRP ledger, literally the private one. And the price of XRP in this private ledger is, I can't even put it into words. Uh, I don't know if it's true. Who knows? But I'm, I, I always say in my videos, never say never because anything is possible. Bitcoin you know, maximalists back in the day were saying, you know, and sorry, people that hated Bitcoin 
and people thought you know it was crazy to invest in it when it was like five cents and obviously going to nearly a hundred thousand australian anything is possible all right and obviously i know the real utility of xrp trillions of dollars are flowing through it with institutions and again once full adoption takes place and this court case is over things are going to go wild and you're going to see it in this video so make sure you stick around before i get to my twitter page now this is interesting all right, this is a confidential, literally a confidential paper that I found just researching stuff on XRP this morning. And I don't even know where I came across it, but this is from the Reserve Bank of Australia. And again, May 2013 meeting. So this is a very old paper and a document that was presented in relation to Bitcoin. So it goes through everything in relation to Bitcoin, but has received some recent media attention driven by a large price movements. In April, it traded uh, price in Tokyo-based Mt. Gox. The largest Bitcoin exchange peaked at $265 US, falling to $105 within hours and to $50 within a week. The current price is around $115 USD. By comparison, Bitcoin's traded range between $5 and $15 during 2012. In addition, it increased media interest and extreme price movements have also led to a number of public inquiries made to staff by uh, about bank policy in this area. Now, obviously, guys, it goes through a whole thing in relation to Bitcoin, and I will link this below in the video description so you can have a look for yourself. But rehashing ideas of stone and gold so bitcoin is a virtual currency essentially a transactions ledger used to make anonymous near instantaneous online transactions it was created by one or more cryptographers and began operating in 2009 unlike traditional electronic payment systems which typically operate through a central infrastructure and administrator uh, Bitcoin operates through a decentralized peer-to-peer -peer network with participants interacting directly with each other and verifying transactions themselves. The integrity of the transaction recorded and is protected by multiple levels of cryptography. In this note, we describe how Bitcoin works and the policy issues that the system potentially raises uh, with the focus on its att attributes as a payment system, risks and blah, blah, blah. Anyway. It goes on to the supply, and this is a full-blown confidential report from the Reserve Bank of Australia. I don't know how the hell I stumbled on this, but what I found interesting is if you scroll all the way to the bottom, look at this. Ripple, developed by OpenCoin Inc. for a profit ent entity, appears to be the Bitcoin alternative getting most publicity, although it is not yet oper in operation, the supply of ripple units is fixed at 100 billion 50 billion will be given to users for no charge and the rest kept by opencoin inc the profit off and expected appreciation in ripple while ripple has its own virtual currency any currency and money created by sorry about this coordinating the chain and how much users willing to lend to specific users can be Obviously, I'm going to zoom in here because it's getting too hard here. But uh, sorry, no charge. Uh, Ripple has its own virtual currency. Any currency and money that created by coordinating a chain and how much users are willing to lend specific users can be exchanged through Ripple system. However, users are required to own a small amount of Ripples in order to pay a small fee for each transaction to protect the system from spam attacks. These Ripples are extinguished from the system. Access to Ripple will be through gateways and entity can be a gateway. And OpenCoin appears to hope that traditional banks will be interested in becoming gateways. Ripple transactions will on average take around five to 10 seconds to be confirmed, but servers charge fees on their confirmation service. So again, the Reserve Bank of Australia has been eyeing off Ripple since 2012 when it was actually you know created by OpenCoin unbelievable stuff right there so guys this is deeper than we think all right and obviously you've got some interesting stuff as well millions of xrp shoveled by ripple odl exchanges here's who's behind it right now so again whale alert again over the past 10 hours carrying out almost 90 million of this ripple affiliated digital currency in the meantime over the past 24 hours again it has added nearly 4% to its price. According to the aforementioned source, the blockchain data wallets tagged by Whale Alert as unknown transferred two lumps of XRP to Bitstamp Exchange. 
This platform is also one of the one of the ODL corridors. Ripple fintech giant works with to conduct seamless and low cost transitional payments using XRP. Per the details revealed by XRP Senate Analytics website, BitHump right here, both transactions were made from addresses BitGo, the largest crypto custody operator in the United States. It works with financial institutions, including Ripple itself and its numerous customers. Among these XRP transfers made to Bitstamp was a transaction that carried 30.4 million to one o Ripple's ODL platforms, Bitso cryptocurrency unicorn based in Mexico, the largest crypto exchange in Latin America. According to the details shared by WayAlert, this is, uh, was a movement of funds from one wallet belonging to Bitso to another of the same exchange. Uh, as I said, guys, this is absolutely nothing to what's coming to this, all right? And you have to see the private ledger video. Now, Coinbase wallet to end support for Bitcoin Cash, Ethereum Classic, Ripple's XRP, and Stellar's XLM. Why are they ending this? Which is interesting. And obviously, they're saying it's low usage as its reasons for no longer supporting those, obviously, assets. So Coinbase wallet will no longer support the native tokens associated with BCH, ETC, XRP, and XLM, effective on December 5th. The assets no longer be supported again, although users with balances will be able to withdraw after that date with a recovery phrase. Coinbase cited low usage as the reason for delisting four coins, all of which rose to sizable prominence in 2017 cryptocurrency bull market. XRP remains the seven largest cryptocurrency with a market cap of $19.6 billion and a 24-hour trade volume of $1 billion across exchanges, which is just unbelievable. Why would they be doing that? I don't know. This is why I advocate for cold storage. And again, Ripple and SEC file their summary judgment pleadings early next dates to watch. So, and again, the battle between Ripple and the SEC, uh, again, which has taken a step towards ruling by Judge Torres. According to the defense attorney, former federal prosecutor, James K. Filan, the legend, both Ripple and the SEC have filed their summary judgment briefs early yesterday. Uh, and again, reported that there are several important deadlines coming up in the next few days. Originally, two disputes had to file their aforementioned pleadings by November 30th. And again, that's happened now early. So on December 2nd, Ripple and the SEC were scheduled to meet jointly to discuss redactions before release was scheduled for December 5th. Finally, on the 22nd of December, the collective motions to seal all documents related to the summary judgment motions were to be filed. And again, which is really interesting. So however... Ripple execs blame the SEC for BlockFi demise and receipt of stolen funds. However, as Finlan wrote to Twitter and early filings could push that the timeline forward a few days, this suggests redacted responses will, will be filed sometime this Friday, which is interesting. The attorney, attorney explained that the assumption is based on the facts that the redacted summary judgment motions were due on the 9th of September, or 19th of September. So you guys write the dates backwards in America. Anyway, uh, the 17th of September and the redacted oppositions were due on the 24th of October, but filed on the 21st of October. So expect the redacted replies to be filed early as well. Interesting, guys. Very interesting, guys. This might be resolved earlier than expected. Now, I'm not going to go into anything else as well, but to Sam Bankman Freed gives first ever audio interview as well, which is incredible. So... Uh, let's have a look here. Following the collapse of FTX, the CEO, Sam Bankman fried has been interviewed by the first time where he denies any wrongdoing. SBF, contrary to public uh, allegation, he did not have a backdoor access to FTX where he manipulated accounts. He said in an interview with YouTuber Tiffany Fong, go follow her on uh, YouTube and on Twitter. It's incredible. Published on November 29th. At the same time, SBF acknowledged he was wrong. On the handling of Alameda's balance sheet, uh, noting that the situation was poorly labeled accounting thing. Yeah, I don't think so, mate. Anyway, I certainly wasn't building some backdoor in this system. I could barely use the system. I knew this system from a user interface perspective, and I was incorrect on Alameda's balances on FTX by a fairly large number, an embarrassingly large new one, uh, and it was because of very poorly labeled accounting thing, he said, Oh, yeah, mate, no worries. Like you can, um, you know, uh, he had billions of dollars, billions in his hands. 
uh, people do crazy stuff with this, you know, with this kind of money. Anyway, Beto O'Rourke returns one million dollars to Sam Bankman-Fried. Other politicians should follow. So, former Democratic candidate for governor of Texas. Beto O'Rourke gave back the money to FTX's Sam Bankman Freed. The former CEO of failed crypto trading ven uh, venue donated $1 million to O'Rourke campaign, according to a report. I think a lot of those uh, politicians should return the money. Now, look at this. BlockFi has $355 million in digital assets frozen on FTX. So the BlockFi has, again, a huge amount of money frozen on FTX. A lawyer said in the bankruptcy court, Block file filed for ba file for bankruptcy protection uh, this week, not long after the FTX collapse earlier in November. An attorney, uh, excuse me about this pop-up here, an attorney for the troubled lender provided new details around the firm's financial relationship with FTX, sister trading firm Alameda Research. Who knows where that money's going to go, all right? And obviously, it's not going to go back to retail because they have to pay a bill from the SEC, which is ridiculous. Now, let's go to CryptoMeter.io. See where the money's been flowing today. We've got BNB, Adam. We've got Ethereum, Doge, XRP, Cardano. We have Shiba Inu, Polkadot, Bitcoin, and AVAX as well. Now, again, this is literally the White House website. I will be sending a letter to the president, uh, obviously explaining the situation here, what's going on with BlockFi, and I don't believe that that money should be going to the SEC. That's all I'm going to say. And I'll be making that very clear. And, uh, and again, I've, I've just seen a conference with BitBoy and a few other influencers that, uh, again, they had one in Miami uh, last night or yesterday. But BitBoy has been involved in seven crypto scams in the past of all projects he worked on either got exit scammed or rug pulled. He has deleted all the videos of scam projects he shilled to his community. MYX, DistX as well. Zao Finance, Ethy right here. Lock Meridian Network, CPH and PAMP. I don't even know what to say. All hell broke loose during that uh, conference as well. Wild scenes, man. Honestly, I watched the whole thing as well. Somebody put that up and I did share that YouTube video. So go watch it. I'll show you in a second. But what I want to show now is, and again, I'm at the Wall Street Bull. I was on Twitter. I will be giving this away, uh, this solid silver bull ring as well when I hit 100,000 subs on YouTube. I'm going to play all this stuff, but I just want to play this incredible, mind-blowing video about XRP on the private ledger. And honestly, it's crazy. And we'll get into all the juicy stuff, but I just want to play it for you now. Hang on a second. Let me find it. It's down here. You really need to see this. Here we are. So, and again, thank you for Merlin Crypto Future Invest and uh, to Crypto Geek for this video. Have a listen to this. Once. I've seen the pro have no, a listen. I don't think they're using another XRP. I know they have a private ledger and a public ledger. I've, se I've seen the private ledger once. I've seen the price go as high as $320,000. And you could see this on one of my shorts uh, when it hit about ten thousand dollars, nine thousand, I think. I've commented to about twenty, thirty people at least that I saw it go to uh, three hundred twenty-seven thousand on a YouTube video once that was live in Japan, and it, from five minutes, five-minute YouTube video, and I've seen that the private ledger does exist. The public ledger also exists. Now, how do they? keep them separate through notes on the XRP ledger, right? The thing is what the merge of the private and public, I think that will happen when this utility starts to come on, right? Also, um, I don't want to lose my train of thought. The XRP ledger, the private ledger, right? And the public ledger at some point, they are going to have to, how, how would I say? There will be a merge at some point guaranteed, but we have to have that regulation first and that clarity before they go ahead and utilize them together. What I think they're doing right now on the private ledger is really testing it and s still using it privately. Uh, yeah, no, so I don't think they're, uh, I don't even know what to say about that one. That's just $327,000 for XRP. I don't know, man. I, obviously, we know that Joel Katz, um, and oh, sorry, uh, David Schwartz mentioned that XRP would be beneficial at a high price and would be more stable at a high price. He did tweet that out a few years back. I don't know. And that is why I tweeted out, you know, like, does anybody... 
uh, have access to the private ledger? If you do, can you please comment below? I'm very curious to know what's going on in this private ledger because, again, I don't have access to that and it'd be very interesting. So I'm putting the feelers out here, guys. If you have access, comment below. Let's get into it because I want to get somebody on the channel who does have access to that private ledger. Anyway, guys, there's a lot happening here. So Coinbase announces again the, the stopping uh, of uh, delisting of XRP and XLM, which is interesting. The fear and greed index is sitting at 26. Uh, India will start testing its retail CBDCs as well on Thursday in four cities with four banks. 53,183 Bitcoin valued at $871 million has been added to exchanges in the last 24 hours. 900 billion right there. Shiba Inu valued at 8.2 million was transferred from crypto.com to Binance. Coinbase again, and we have some videos about ISO 222. And again, I asked the audience if anyone has access to that. Uh, XRP Ledger. Sam McMahon-Fried says he donated the same amount to both political parties, which again is crazy. Tiffany Fong, massive shout out and thank you for this video. Go and have a listen to the full interview again before B-Boy. So uh, awesome work, Tiffany. That's incredible as well. And uh, this is Joel Katz, uh, David Schwartz, the CTO of Ripple again, Ledger, the XRP Ledger and the future of Web3. Have a listen to this. Of Ripple. Uh, if you're here, I'm sure you've heard of Ripple. <laughs> so with that, Actually, let me play you this interview up here, guys. Sorry, I do apologize about that. And we'll get into that stuff that happened in that conference with BitBoy because that's just wild, man. Anyway, uh, where are you? Right here. I think I retweeted it before. It's the first thing, actually. Sorry, guys. Here, listen to this. Well, he said, what Ripple, the company, is going to do is we're going to focus on building high-quality technologies that will allow institutional adoption. And so we look, what are the blockers? Why can't banks use a cryptocurrency to settle? And the answer is their messaging systems are antiquated. They don't even know like where the money has to go when they make a payment. The messaging isn't even closed loop. It's back in the 70s if you're lucky. Uh, and so we focused on building a system called RippleNet, which is an institutional messaging and settlement system that can settle with a digital asset. Um, meantime, all kinds of other projects on the XRP ledger, focusing on things like payments, but also things that are not payments, like stable coins, which are kind of payment adjacent, um, and, and all kinds of different projects, including more recently things like NFTs. So there's an ecosystem of development on the XRP ledger, and then there's Ripple, who's, among other things, working to drive institutional adoption, use the XRP ledger as a settlement. Yeah, and, and j just real quick on that notion, um, do you think people sometimes people just get confused about XRP and Ripple, like me, like the relationship between it? Because you know you're talking about Ripple being a centralized entity, it's a, it's a business, right? It's a, right. It's a company. And then XRP Ledger being, you know, decentralized overall. Um, what's the best way for people to? I mean, you kind of outlined it there, but what's the best way for people to think about that? Because it, I think sometimes I hear people say things like, "Oh, well, you know, Ripple centralized, so it's it's bad in crypto, etc." But everything that you're describing right now is like, "Hey, no bank is going to want to use a technology, at least not right now, that is going to, um, you know." take con complete control out of their hands, right? So h how would you kind of It's actually that? very interesting. So I've heard a lot of people say that no bank would want to use a decentralized system. They want to use a system they can control. The problem is if you are Deutsche Bank, HSBC, Credit Suisse, JP Morgan Chase, and maybe two or three others, that argument is perfect. But, if, but, that, but that's what, five banks? How many banks are there? Like there's thousands. If you're any other bank but those five or six I just mentioned, a system controlled by the banks is a system controlled by your competitors. And right. if I say, well, would you want to rely for your business on a system controlled by your competitors? That sounds a lot less exciting, right? People think of banks as like, you know, people will say these things like, oh, the big banks, you know, they've got the whole an organized. He's actually saying it to you right in front of your face. Anyway, so library, there's an update as well. The library case, library has filed a status report in which it states that it cannot reach an agreement with the SEC on the remedies the SEC is seeking and has requested a briefing schedule so the court can make a decision. Crazy stuff right here. Perkins and Coe is a massive law firm as well. They are based in Australia, which is insane. Uh, again, XRP price from Val Hill Capital. I don't know, man. Things are getting crazy with these price predictions. Again, that was the biggest one that I've ever seen in this space. The Miami mayor is still taking paychecks in Bitcoin. The mayor, whatever you want to call it right here. And again, I'm going to end up on this, but the Ripple partner, Novati, showing they extended their Ripple partnership as part of their growth strategy in the AGM presentation, obviously annual general meeting. 
It's happening, guys. It is happening right here. And I'm not going to play this video of the lizard man right here, but I do apologize. This video is very, very long. 30 minutes long. Sorry about this, but there's just too much to go through. And again, my portfolio is what it is. And again, I'm really focusing on these coins because this is where the real action is happening right now. We know this, but Ethereum, XRP, of course, ADA, AVAX. I'm a bit iffy on that one, but it is a banking coin. Link, Stellar, XLM, Algorand, Quant, Hedera, IOTA, Casper, XDC, and Alliance Block. Guys, I'm so bullish on XRP. If these exchanges start delisting it, we need to put it into cold storage because something's massive is brewing on XRP. Uh, just given the fact that, you know, why would Coinbase be taking it off their wallet from low usage? I mean, is it going to be a matter of time before XRP is no longer available to retail? I don't know. But if I'm seeing price predictions like that, something really big's coming here and I just want to get to the bottom of it and I want to see myself the XRP private ledger and I'm wondering if we can get access to that because that would just blow my mind if I saw something at uh, that value. I think it would just send the price parabolic. Anyway, thank you for sticking around this long, guys. I appreciate it. Join the Patreon. Follow me on socials. I will speak to you all in the comments and the community tab. Stay safe, everyone. Peace out. Bye.